Mark Spencer from Ripple Training here with a few quick tips on how to use the RT Simple 3D effect, which is part of the Ripple Tools collection for Final Cut Pro 10. So here we are in Final Cut Pro 10. I am in the Titles browser in the Ripple's Tools collection, and here is the RT Simple 3D effect. So what this does is it allows you to transform a clip in uh, all three dimensions in X, Y, and Z for both position and rotation. And it's easier to show you than to explain it, so let's do that. I'm going to uh, press the X key with my playhead over a clip to set a range for that clip. I'll select the RT Simple 3D effect and press Q to connect it to that clip for that clip range. And then I'll select it. Now, uh, a couple things happen right away. First of all, immediately we see it's transformed the clip in uh, uh, doing a couple things in transformations. When I say transformations, I generally mean position, rotation, and scale. If we look in the title inspector, we can see the clip's been scaled down and uh, it's been rotated on both X and Y. So we see some changes right there right away. And that's so that you can see kind of what it does. So uh, while it's here, we can see I could scale it back up, I could scale it down. And if you drag on any of these um, fields here, you can rotate it on X, on Y, or in Z. And notice that it's rotating around this center point where we see the little on-screen control. And that's critical because you can change that. So we can set it up to be on uh, any angle, and of course you can animate any of these to change over time. I'll do that in just a second. But I want to explain this guy here because this on-screen control is the anchor point. It's the point around which the clip will uh, rotate or scale. So for example, if I move this, and it's a little tricky. When you drag in the viewer, you got to drag just a little bit. goes a long way. And if you find it difficult to do, just use the anchor point control over in the inspector. And it's a little easier to control there. So I'm going to put it close to the edge. And notice it moves the image. It doesn't actually move the anchor point. The anchor point stays in the center, but it's now along this edge. But I want to move everything back over. So I'm going to use position to do that, to move everything back over. So now check it out. Now that I've done that, if I rotate around Y, notice it's rotating on that left edge, kind of like a door swinging now. Okay? Or let's go ahead and move the anchor point. Let's say I wanted to move it down and over so that it's kind of in the middle there. And then I'll use position to move the entire thing back in the frame. Now if I rotate on X, we can say it rotates uh, along that edge down there, kind of like a laptop top or something like that. And uh, you can animate any of this stuff. So let's, let's change Y back to zero so that when we animate on X, it just goes rotate it right up or down. So we could rotate it to come up into view. So if we want to animate it, let's go ahead and move it all the way down. And I'll move back to the beginning of the clip and set a keyframe. Let's set this right for 90 degrees. So it's a completely invisible. I'll move forward in time and I'll change the value to zero. So now if I scrub through that, we've got a little animation where it flips up into place. And of course you could have it flip down as well. And that's a basic idea that you can change the anchor point and have an object rotate or scale around that anchor point. If we see it scale, notice it scales down right to that point and back out again. So if we were to take that anchor point and move it right to the corner, move the whole thing back over, and let's set the rotation back to zero. If I were to scale it now, it would scale out from that anchor point. And that's the basic idea behind the uh, Ripple 3, Simple 3D. Now, uh, only other thing here is you can do a couple more things. You can add a drop shadow, but you're not going to see a drop shadow right now. So before we do that, let's add a background. So you can click Enable Drop Zone, and then click the Drop Zone Well, and then go over to the Event Browser and select something. So now I've got a background in here. And to get back the Text Inspector, you need to click off of the title and click on it again. I don't know a way around that, but it's just what you need to do. Now let's move the whole thing kind of back over and let's rotate it a little bit, something like that. And then we can add a drop shadow, increase the distance, and maybe add some blur to the drop shadow. And that's basically how you can control the 
RT, simple 3D effect. If you want to get something that's in the project uh, as a background, you can make it into a compound clip, which will force it into the event, and then you can select it in the event to be a background. I hope that's helpful, and thank you for watching.